7 and 6, would you continue with the description of your station keeping? aboard the Titan II launch vehicle starting about 10 p.m. last evening. This was the operation took a little less than four hours. In the white room at Launch Complex 19, astronauts Edward White and Mike Collins, the backup pilots for the Gemini 7 mission, are in the spacecraft checking out various systems. Early this afternoon, they will be ready to report to the prime pilots, Frank Gorman and Jim Lovell, on the status of the Gemini 7 spacecraft. Level a big comment, but he was looking forward to a good long flight. Attending the breakfast with astronauts Borman and Lovell with Wally Shira and Tom Stafford, pilots for the Gemini 6 mission, which will be scheduled some nine days after the Gemini 7 liftoff. When I first heard of this plan to rendezvous two spacecraft by launching a second spacecraft from the same pad within nine days, I thought it was next to impossible. The prime pilots for the Gemini 7 mission, Frank Borman and Jim Lovell, have arrived at Mars Complex 19. They're in their lightweight suits. They have their helmets attached. Basically, this lightweight suit offers greater mobility and comfort for the crew, which will fly 14 days in space. However, it offers the same protection in any emergency as the standard suit. During the flight of Gemini 7, the crew will remove their lightweight spacesuit and fly in their underwear. T minus one minute and counting. The launch vehicle, first stage engines will ignite and build up some 430,000 pounds of thrust. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero, ignition. Engine start, we have a liftoff. on two minutes. Mark two minutes. Our velocity is 3,600 miles per hour. The crew reports their go for staging, which should occur in a very few seconds. Okay, we stand by for staging. Roger, staging. You see that staging? Right. Look at the moon, Jim. Right. We're standing by for point eight, which is the achievement of 80% of the desired velocity to put this 8,000 pound spacecraft into orbit. Point eight, the over VR. Right down the slot, Gemini 7. Uh, I was in the control center at Cape Kennedy watching the launch of seven, and as the spacecraft was inserted into orbit, I glanced over at another TV monitor, which showed the six launch vehicle being wheeled out of the hangar. So well, that's how fast the reaction was taking place. Mormon reports he has the booster in sight. There she is, Jim. There she is. Our initial orbit was 87 by 177 nautical miles. This was very close to what we'd hoped for. As a matter of fact, I think that our launch vehicle was closer to nominal than any other one that's been fired. After insertion, we turned around and thrusted back toward our second stage, and then we station kept or remained with the booster, uh, actually we were about 60 feet away from it, for around 20 minutes. About 22 minutes into the flight, we thrusted away from our second stage and then got down to the business of a 14-day long-duration flight. 
We had about 20 experiments to perform in the two weeks ahead, but we, of course, had to check our new suits out, and we did regular medical checkups with the surgeons on the ground. Gemini 7 is basically a medical mission. It's the culmination of our efforts to increase or double man's exposure to the space flight environment, ending with a 14-day manned space flight. There were three principal problems left following our four and eight day flights. These were the ability to sleep in a space flight environment. Uh, secondly, the response of the heart and blood vessels to the readaptation to the ground-based or 1G environment after being weightless. And lastly, the uh, reduction or decrease in the number of red blood cells that is observed following uh, space flight. We were continually interested in the status of Gemini 6, and I must say that Elliot C. and the people at MCC kept us very well informed. Uh, you can tell them that the pad preparation schedule is going very well. Okay. The way the pad uh, preparation schedule for Gemini 6 is going real well. Thank you. It's always taken about nine weeks or 63 days of actual work to clean up the pad, erect the booster, make the spacecraft, and check out the system. We studied the problems, we found solutions, we streamlined the work effort, and within a couple of days, the whole atmosphere improved. With the planned 14-day flight, this gave us some margin, and the whole plan now appeared practical. Day 7, Houston, Capcom. This is Jeff, day 7, reach your clear. Good morning, flight. How's breakfast going? Excellent. My compliments to the chef. How is the suit configuration working out? We heard some comments over Carnarvon. The suit configuration is working out very well. I'm out of the suit now. I got slightly cool last night while I was sleeping. However, I'm fine right now. Gemini Control here. During the next pass across the United States, the Gemini 7 crew will be given a go for a 61-1 flight. The 61 would be the start of the 61st revolution the one refers to the Western Atlantic landing area, which is the prime landing area. The spacecraft is over the Caribbean, and Lovell is talking to Dr. Berry. Let's cut in there. Okay, could we have your sleep report? Roger. Both of us slept six to seven hours last night. Probably woke two or three times during the night. Do you think you're sleeping better now than you were the last couple of nights? The first night was pretty poor, as you can probably guess. But we both needed a good sleep the second night, and we've been sleeping that way every time. Very good. A7, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. This is Gemini 7. This is Houston Flight. How long have you been up there now? Let's see. It's 139 hours, 5 minutes, 14 and a half seconds. OK, that's the lot. I feel like I was born up here. Uh, be advised that the cow's going very well at the Cape on Jiminy 6. <laughs> the crew is up and healthy and we're all ready to go. Gemini 7. Your go for 119-1. Thank you, Ed. The word from the Cape is, we are go. They are go aboard Gemini 7 as they make their silent sweeps around the world on their 111th revolution. The prime pilots for the Gemini 6 flight, Wally Shira and Tom Stafford, and are now on their way to Launch Complex 19 to board their spacecraft. The launch of Gemini 6 is scheduled at the beginning of the 118th revolution of Gemini 7. T-minus 48 